In this video, I'm going to show you how I make these little candle holders. Might be just the ideal little handmade gift that you are looking for. The base is made from a mango log. Now in cutting something that's round, you need to be get very careful of what you're doing. I have this little jig that fits into the bandsaw guides on my foot for cutting logs. So I can set this in the miter track and then run it very close to the bandsaw and support it quite securely for cutting off those slices. The end result will be something like this that I can use for the base of this candle holder. The stem of the candle holder is made from a piece of mabu or kwila that's 80mm long and 50mm square. The size of this was determined by the size of my little battery candles. These I got off eBay. They come in different sizes and different, different intensities. This one's a cool white. And that is the determining factor in the sizing for a lot of the rest of the project. The tools I'll be using, a roughing gouge to rough down the coiler or mobile into the round. some scrapers at some stage for cleaning up work or finishing work, a parting tool to part down for what will be a little tenon to help seat this into the base, and spindle gouges for some basic shaping. I'll also be using a Jacob's chuck and various size forstner bits to make various cuts for the resource of the hand candle as well as for the insert for your finger in the handle grip. So first up I'm going to true up the square section that's going to be the middle section of the project. To do that I'll need to find the centres so I can then do it between these two centres as a bit of spindle turning. I need to locate the centre first up so I can put it between the centres and then first up I'm going to take off what will be the little handle. There's a number of ways you can find the centre. You could just simply eyeball it or use a ruler or one of these little centre finders works brilliant. Just placing it on there with a couple of lines across the middle and there we have the centre on each end. Now because this is a hard timber and I'm needing to grip it with the four prongs of the uh, headstock piece, I'm going to drill a little pilot hole to take that centre in. With that in place I can easily put onto the headstock and then bring the tail stock up to marry with that same mark. Lock the tail stock off nice and firm and wind it in so it's gripping with the four prongs in the headstock and then lock off the tail stock. Bring the tool rest up nice and close so it's almost touching. Lock that down, hand spin the piece to make sure it's clearing properly and now I can round that off with the roughing gouge. Speed is going to be up around the 1700 and because the faster will give me the better cut. And with the roughing gouge I'm going to be coming down the hill towards the centre of the piece so that I, I'm not tearing the, the work away by coming uphill. I can tell whether it's round by placing the tool onto the timber and if I get a lot of bounce then it means it's not round yet. We'll keep going.
no bounce, so as you can see, this piece is now round. What I want to do now is cut a little tenon on here so that I can mount this into a chuck. Now the size of the tenon on a four jaw chuck, they are cut out of a single piece of metal and then cut into the four jaws. So when the gap is around the two to three mil, that gives us the best gripping by having a full circle. If I wind this all the way out, you can see that I no longer have a circle. So by having the, the jaws set to, to about that size and then cutting a tenon to meet it, I'm going to get the most amount of grip. To that end, I have these set of calipers that have been set to that size. Now using the skew chisel, I'm going to do a peeling cut to come in to match the size that this is. So I'm starting the tool right high with the bevel rubbing and then bringing it down so it's contacting the timber. And once they slip through, then I've matched that size. I'll just put a slight dovetail on that to match the dovetail on the jaws. It's 15 degrees. Now I can mount that onto the chuck. Unlock the tail stock and I can now wind it off. Use my knockout bar to remove that prong centre, put it in its little caddy. tightening from both sides as always. The jaws just like to be tightened from both sides because of the mechanical makeup for them. The next thing I'm, I'll do is true off this surface and a tool that gives me a very nice clean cut across a surface like this is the skew chisel. By holding the chisel so that the bevel is facing the direction of the cut and using the long point and bringing it into there I can get a very nice surface on that end. The first thing I want to do, and the reason why this piece is, is as long as it is, is that I'm going to use the end section here to cut off the little ring handle. So, in this case I've made that 22mm on the inside, so I'll use a forcing bit to drill into this um, you know, wide enough for what the handle should be. So it's a 22 mil or 7 8 force and a bit that I'm using. And the depth that I need to go is just sufficient for to make the handle, you know, something that you can grip onto. Lay speed down to around the four or five hundred for drilling. Check that out of there.
Now I need to turn that down to so that I've got sufficient width for the the uh, handle. So let's say that's going to be around about there. And again, the ideal tool for that, or a tool that's very successful in doing that, is the skew chisel by doing that that um, peeling cut. So rubbing the bevel, bring the tool in. I'll turn the speed up a little bit, it's going a bit slow for now. So back up to around the 1700. And raising the handle to create the cut. So now we'll just part that off, leaving sufficient width for the handle, so probably, oh, let's say about there. So when I'm parting that off, I'm going to be taking some from the large diameter as well as some from the lower diameter. Similar process to using the skew chisel, starting up high and then bringing the handle in to make the cut. So once I've got it in that little way, I can now use, again I'll use a skew chisel and just take a little bevel off, off the sides to get rid of that rough corner or sharp corner. Give that a little sand, won't take much because I've got quite a clean cut so I've gone straight to the 400 grit. And now we'll part that off. I'll wrap my hand around it so I can catch it as it goes off, but I'm not actually gripping it, I'm just supporting it, waiting for it to fall off into my hand. And there we, there we have our little handle. Put that aside for later. Now I need to take all of that off so I can start with the rest of it and the first part's going to be to cut the recess to take the candle. The size of that recess will depend on the candle that you are using whether it's a battery one like this or a, a proper tea candle. In my case um, 38 mil will do me just nicely or one and one and a half inches. Skew chisel. So now the recess for the actual candle. It will vary depending upon the size of the candle that you get hold of. In my case it's one and a half inches or 38 mil. So I'm going to drill a 38 mil hole with a forster bit into the end to allow the recess to handle the candle. So seating the Jacob's chuck. And I want my 38 mil or an or one and a half inch if you're using Imperial. On the keyless chuck, works very nice. Speed for drilling is around four to 500 RPM, so I'm turning the speed down. That's sitting on 518, so that should be quite nice. Now, the depth that I need to go is just simply to create the appropriate size recess to support the battery candle. So it doesn't have to be very deep.
that should be plenty. So let's remove that out of the way. Again, it just winds out with the uh, winding the tailstock back, removes it from there quite nicely. Now that we have that recess for the candle hole itself, what are we going to do with the base? It needs to be an appropriate length to support the diameter that you've done the candle. In this case, it worked out to be about 50 mil high. So um, if I come down that sort of distance from, the, from there and sort of mark it off, it's going to be around about there. So that's approximately where the bottom is going to finish. What I also want is to have a small tenon on the base because I'll be drilling a hole into the actual mango base to allow me to seat this onto it nicely and glue it in nice and tight. So I've got plenty of timber here to do that. So, so that I can see my dimensions, I will part this in slightly, but not all the way down to the 12 mil that I'm going to work with for that tenon so that I have plenty of strength in the timber while I'm doing work on the rest of it. Now using a spindle gouge I'm going to put some basic shape onto this. It doesn't have to be much, just something aesthetic and also reduce the diameter a little bit because at the moment that rim is too thick. It only needs to be a little bit to support the outside edge of the candle. In doing that I'm using my, my spindle gouge and most of the cutting is going to be done at either the 11 o'clock or the 1 o'clock position. So the tool is going to be held fairly far down and it and depending upon how I'm cutting, I might have the flute vertical or slightly at an angle to pick up the cut. So now we've got a little bit of a shape on it. Part of the reason for doing that sort of shape is to allow for the, the handle to be able to sit in there. So given, given what I'm seeing now, I might take this little uh, part down just a little bit closer to the bottom. Yeah, and they have a little bit of a surface for that um, to sit on a bit better than just straight flat. Um, sanding now, in the usual way, we'll start off with maybe around uh, 120 or so. In this instance, instead of using just straight paper, I'm going to use a little rotary tool. 
This helps to prevent um, tool uh, sanding marks coming onto the timber um, because it's going to spin while the t work is also spinning. Lay speed down to around the 700 mark and then As usual, we get, we'll work up through the grits. I started at 120, then we'll move to the 180, 240, and up to about 400. The first grit does all the work. Now all I need to do is remove the sanding marks from the previous grit. Here goes the 320 and finally 400. Now the Quila or Mabu in its own right does produce a very nice finish but we've got a fairly large part of timber here which doesn't necessarily look attractive so there are different ways that you can embellish this. One could simply be that you put a series of grooves in there. One of the tools that I like to use is the Robert Sawry texturing tool. It's a spiral cutter that's going to spin and create different patterns on the timber. So I'm going to do a little cross hatch on this. This, this is actually a 2 mil wheel that's been fitted on, onto the tool at the moment. So I'll be coming in at an angle from two directions with the lay speed down around the 400 mark. All I need to do is sweep the tool backwards and forwards while that's spinning. Then change direction. Give it a slight touch with the 400 grit paper just to get off the little burrs that's there. It's then nice to highlight where that starts and finish and the skew chisel works just nice for that. A little V can go in there. So I'm just holding the tool on the side and feeding the sharp point in where that pattern starts and finishes. Uncertain, stop the lathe and check. So I've got there and there. Okay. and I do have a very subtle little grooves in there. So once you've got that little pattern there, you can highlight it even further if you wish. You could use a piece of wire to burn into there and make it go black, but I'm going to leave it like this for today. Next thing I need to do is take this down to a 12mm tenon because I'm going to be drilling a hole in the base so that I can mount this piece onto that base. And what I'll do is I'll set these calipers to be 12mm I can actually use the force and the bit to help that I'm going to be drilling with to help get that size right. If anything, I'm going to want it to be slightly smaller than what the force and the bit will be, so I'll just nip that one more time. And that's a little bit tight. Good. So back to this parting tool, I'm going to be bringing that down uh, in, a, in a peeling motion to create the size that I'm after.
I need, what I'm doing is making sure I have the tool slightly turned towards the headstock so that I give a slight undercut so that I get a nice clean um, contact on the outside edge with the base when it's glued in place. If it's your desire to have a finish that's done on the lathe, now would be the time to do it. I'll be doing a finish off the lathe. So now I just need to part that off. I don't need very much of that tenon for what the purpose of anchoring it into the base. And that's partly why I've done such a large cut across this area so I can now just continue through and taking it completely off. That little bit there could be easily taken off with a knife or carefully using your skew chisel to cut through that. And there we have the base for our candle holder. So now moving on to the actual base section itself so we can put that, that other piece on there. I'm going to take the chuck off. So for the bases, I've already used in the same way that I used this, same way I used the centering tool before, I've marked a number of lines around this uneven surface to allow me to figure out where I would think the centre should actually be. I'm using a face plate which has double sided tape on it that I'm then going to stick this onto to allow me to do the little bit of work required on here. The waste, waste block that's on the face plate is just pine. So move the tool rest out of the way and using the live centre. I'll hold the point on where I want the centre to be and just drive that up. And that's now fixed. So the first next thing I'll do is drill that little 12 mil hole that's going to allow me to put the actual candle supporter into the base. Lay speed down to that four about the four or five hundred again for drilling. Just check that depth is okay. A little bit more. <whistles> and 
nice. Now, to help also with the aesthetics, etc., I'm going to, um, with a scraper, just put a little recess in here, a little co uh, cove. Um, it's just part of the aesthetics. It also provide more support for the, the, the handle. So a little groove here, that allows this to sit nicer in, into the base. What, this darker portion around here was created because I've used super glue to ensure that the bark stays where it is. So I might just trim that a little bit too to get rid of that. Just check that I get the tool height where I, I'm comfortable so that I'm holding the scraper down a little bit to work across the base. Speed back up. Yep, that looks about right. Look, just sand, give that a quick sand. So we're just going to give that a quick sand with the 320 and the 400. Uh, the old mango has a distinctive smell when you're working it like that. And there we go, that's uh, ready to be mounted. Now how are we going to mount this? Okay, we're gluing that in there. And um, I'm just going to use a bit of super glue for that. I've got the um, medium thickness zap super glue. And... Uh, just put a general, generous amount around the centre and a little bit around the rim. And if I put that on there, I can bring the tail stock up. While I'm doing that, I can glue on the little handle in the same way. That's going to sit wherever you think's nice, um, probably in one of the wider places, so, one of, so probably about there. And again, I'll use the super glue for that. So we're putting that about there. Bit of a dob of super glue on that part and on this part. So I've super glued that on using the medium strength or medium density super glue. Now we can activate it so I can move on using the accelerant. Right. This is, remember this has been fixed on there using double sided tape so I should be able to ease that off. You can see how well double sided tape works. Just a lot of gentle force. You may need something to help prise it, but that is starting to move. Just some consistent force, and here it's coming away nicely now. Right, so there's our candle holder. Now in a previous video, we made little Christmas bells. So let's glue a couple of the, them on here to enhance this, the look of this as a Christmas decoration.
almost ready to go. Just need to put some finish on it. One of the products I've been very happy with in recent times to start using is the Evolution product from Whittle. This full gloss finish goes on quite easily. You don't even need to do it on the lathe. We've sanded this piece to 400. All we need to do is apply it on there. It will actually be touch dry in about 30 to 45 minutes, allowing us to put the second coat on. There's a couple of ways it can be applied. Um, paper towel works quite well, or, or flannel, but we've got some tight little areas in here. And that's where a brush can come in handy. So let's put some finish on there. We just, um, we'll just dip it in there and rub it all the way around, working it in, in amongst that area where we put the, the, the enhancement before. Okay. So in the areas where it's a bit hard to get to, that's where a brush can be handy. I'll just brush that in amongst all of that and inside the bells, although they were previously finished anyway. So it's a fairly um, thickish coat at the moment, but I will be working off any excess because in, as with most finishes, less is always better. But for now, just spreading it all the way around, working it into those little groove areas in there and around the top. a little bit around this side so it's quite thick there at the moment so let's work some of that back off because you don't need it that thick but it has allowed us to put a big coat a, a good good coating on there now Sometimes it's an advantage to wear gloves when you're doing these sorts of finishes, but um, I haven't put them on at this moment, but I often will use gloves to apply a finish. So there I've removed most, all that excess that's not needed. I can see I've got a nice even coat around the piece, and um, in about three quarters of an hour I can put in the second coat. And here we have a fancy little candle, battery candle holder. Thank you for watching.